Okay, so. Are we starting? Time. All right, uh, I think it's a good time to start. Thank you everyone for coming. My name is Ani Creed. I for, work for Pacific Clinics as a program assistant. We have Riley Stewart here. She's the behavior intervention specialist working for Pacific Clinics Head Start and Early Head Start. Uh, she works with our teachers and your children, and she's here to uh, give us an awesome presentation today. So the way that we organize this is that Riley is going to start with the video, and she's going to go through some PowerPoint slides. And the last 10, 15 minutes, we're going to leave it uh, open for uh, parents, uh, home educators, staff, whoever is here uh, joining us today to ask their questions. Um, if you if they have suggestions, comments, you guys can go ahead and. Uh, ask us in the last 10, 15 minutes. Uh, please, if you have any technical difficulties, type in the chat. I will try my best to help you guys out uh, on the side. All right, Riley, if you're ready, uh, we're here to hear you. Okay, thank you, Ani, for the introduction. Thank you guys all for coming. I appreciate it. This is our first webinar, so we're gonna see how this goes. And I'm gonna start this off with a video. So let me go ahead and share the screen with you guys. We all want to give our children what they need to grow to their full potential. And as parents, we play an important role in their development. But our parenting is affected by the supports and challenges in our lives, including experiences that cause what's known as toxic stress. Stress is called toxic when it doesn't let up. And there aren't supportive relationships to help us cope. That can make it hard to get through the day, let alone be the best caregivers we can be. The overwhelming burden of toxic stress can affect the health and well-being of adults. It can also affect the development of children in ways that can last a lifetime. In a constant state of fight or flight can make it feel like we're always on edge or like it's impossible to calm down. And these feelings can overload our ability to provide the supportive relationships that children need in order to thrive. Think of toxic stress as heavy cargo. Just as it only hold so much weight before it stops moving forward. Challenging life circumstances, like losing a job or not having a place to live, can weigh us down. And just as a truck can break down if it carries too much for too long, we too can wear down from being overburdened without the support we need. When toxic stress is related to things we can't control, like poverty, abuse, or racism, it can feel especially heavy to take on. But experiencing toxic stress doesn't have to determine who we are or how we act. And understanding how stress affects us can empower us to make change in our lives. There are things we can do to buffer ourselves and our children against the effects of even the most intense stress. Just as redistributing cargo from an overloaded truck can help it run again. Supports and services, things like food pantries, job training programs, or even just talking with someone who cares can help us focus on caring for ourselves and our children. And just as regular maintenance is required to keep a truck running, reliable access to community services can help us manage the load during challenging times. Reaching out to get support can be difficult, but things that might seem very small, like sitting and breathing deeply, playing I spy with your child, or even sharing a walk or a snuggle can make a difference. Over time, these small steps can build our resilience and our children's by strengthening the skills and relationships that help us cope. And our communities can build resilience too by providing services and opportunities that help all families thrive. Supports like these help build a strong foundation for developing brain architecture. So the earlier we can provide them, the better. But the brain is capable of change throughout life and it's never too late for a tune-up. Coping with and healing from toxic stress takes a lot of effort and support 
but we all need the help of others in difficult times. And building resilience and strength in our families and communities is one of the most important investments we can make as a society. In the end, it will help all of us become the parents that we want to be. Okay, let me go ahead and stop this. I hope you guys like the web, the YouTube, just for an introduction. Hello. Hi. Hi. Hi, Melissa. Did you just join? Yeah, I was like, how does this work? <laughs> All right. Sorry, I, Melissa. I, I just oh. messaged you on um on the email. On the email. Well, uh, if yeah. you need to talk to me, just use the chat or the Q and A, and I will be able to help you out. Uh, so mm -hmm. right now, Riley is presenting her slide. So if mm -hmm. you could please just um, go to the chat and type whatever technical problems you have, I can help you out there, okay? Okay. All right, thank you. Thank you. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and start the PowerPoint presentation. So I'm gonna go ahead and share the screen again and start. Okay. We'll save all the questions and the comments and everything for the end. And we also have polls and things throughout the webinar. Okay, so taking care of ourselves, reduce your stress. Your stress doesn't just impact you, and it also impacts your children. So the learning objectives, we're gonna understand the definition of stress. We're gonna recognize the link between thoughts and your stress. We're gonna recognize your role in stress. We're going to identify and practice strategies to reduce your level of stress. And then we're going to also understand how stress impacts you and your child. So understanding stress. We all have stress, yet too much stress can take a toll on your health and your child's health and development. What is stress? So I'm gonna go ahead and open this up for the chat and I'm gonna go ahead and ask you guys, what are your sources of stress? And I'll go ahead and read some of the comments in the chat of what your sources of stress are. So if you guys, I'm gonna take a minute and you guys could go ahead and put in your answers of what your source of stress are in the chat. I see we have work as a source of stress. We have college, we have family issues, we have financial issues. We have another one for school. Children struggling around this time for remote learning. Children at home, children, yes, <laughs> I agree that's for mine too. Relationship issues, um, getting back to normal, being able to get back to doing normal things we used to do. It's a lot of stresses that I'm seeing. Everyone, I think we can all relate, not know, knowing that I can't protect our kid, like that we can't protect our kids what's going on in the world, dealing with home and work duties. It's a lot. So let me go ahead. I'm gonna go ahead and close this for a little bit. You guys can go ahead and keep putting them in if you need to. I'm gonna go ahead and move to the next slide. And it's gonna go ahead and let us know some of the common sources of parent stress, which is some of the things that you've already mentioned that we all seem to have in common, financial stress, parenting, meeting the basic needs, 
exposure to violence, loss or separation from a loved one, illness, demands of work or school, discrimination, prejudice, conflict with family or friends, childhood trauma, and now we could definitely add this COVID-19 crisis as a common source as well. So again, I'm gonna go ahead and open this back up to you guys. How do you know when you're stressed? So for instance, for me, I know I'm stressed when I feel a little frantic and I start talking real fast, I start moving real fast. That's when I know that I know I'm stressed, my body starts tensing up. So I want you guys to put in the chat, how do you guys know that you're stressed? How do you know when you're feeling stressed? And I'll go ahead and read some of them, some of the comments like I did before. I'll give you guys a minute to type those in. So we have feeling tired, your anxiety starts to kick in, sometimes feeling sad, feeling tired sleepy, getting mad easily, headaches, back pain, forget forgetful, your face gets warm, can't concentrate, all of these are well relatable, not being able to think clearly, irritation, trouble sleeping, hunger, getting hungry, not enough sleep, anxiety starts to rise. All of these are, all of these are definite stress identifiers that you're, that your body's trying to let you know that you're stressed. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to the next slide. And so, some common symptoms of how you know you're stressed thinking wise would be memory problems like you guys said inability to concentrate it might be a continuous worry um, anxiety a lot of you guys have put racing thoughts so that's something thinking wise of how you would know you are stressed feeling wise feeling down overwhelmed irritable, inability to relax, all of which you guys have said that you guys have experienced. So that feeling wise, we know we feel when we're stressed. It's definitely a, a feeling that we have. And then how your body feels when you're stressed, that could be excessive perspiration, sweating, chest pains, heart racing, you get frequent cold or illnesses, you can get sick often have nausea, dizziness, or headaches. I saw those also in the chat that you guys had um, headaches and you can feel it in your chest and body gets tense. And common symptoms for behavior, the doing part of it, increase, decrease appetite. I saw hunger down for um, a few nervous habits. I saw a lot of irregular difficulty sleeping, um, excessive use of alcohol, cigarettes, or drugs, and often losing your temper. We saw that as well as being a little more irritable when we know you're stressed. And that's a common behavior of knowing that you're stressed. So we're going to make a big difference in your life and your child's life by first addressing your stress. So that's the first step we're going to do is address your stress and my role in stress. So we're going to recognize the link between thoughts, behavior, and emotion and recognize your role in stress creation and reduction. So the link between thoughts, behavior, and emotion. Your thoughts impact your behavior. So stress comes from the way we see or think about a situation. So we're gonna talk about this thought, behavior, emotion cycle. So we're gonna start off with a thought, which is an all or nothing thinking. So something happens and you instantly get discouraged, 
and you go, there's no point in trying. So then yeah. that gets linked to the mood or the emotion, which your emotion is instantly going to feel lower because internally you're going to feel it could be worthless, discouraged, like a failure. That's going to be the emotion coming from that thought, which would be the all or nothing thinking. And then that's going to lead into the emotions. And then from the emotions, it's going to lead into the behavior. And you're going to have a reduced behavior, which could be seen as avoiding people in situations, becoming less active. Um, it could also be um, a height of depression. Anything that's a reduced behavior coming from feeling discouraged, worthless, based off of the thought that there's no point of trying. So all of this ends up being a cycle of stress. You get stressed, you think you're stressed, your emotions are feeling stressed, and then your behavior are all affected in an ongoing cycle. So these are all examples of unhelpful patterns of thinking. So the all or nothing thinking is very unhelpful. Thinking I'm a total failure, failure does not help when it comes to your thought process. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna also eliminate the should statements saying I should exercise, I shouldn't be so lazy, I should do this, I shouldn't do that. Also, another unhelpful pattern of thinking would be predicting the future, catastrophizing, which would be going to the complete extreme. Like I'm gonna get fired and then my whole life will be ruined forever. Just taking it off the edge when it comes to a situation, just thinking the absolute worst every time you have a situation presented to you. So based off of that, I want, we're going to put a poll up and it's going to be, it's going to pop up on the screen. It's, I have found myself using these unhelpful patterns of thinking within the last couple of weeks. So you're going to answer yes, no, or I'm not sure. And just give us a second and we're going to have a poll that should pop up. And then I'm gonna have, give you guys a couple of minutes to answer the poll. And then we'll go ahead and share the results and keep going. So I'll give you guys a couple of minutes to answer. And those unhelpful patterns of thinking, just to refresh, would be the, the, sh the things that you should do, the should thinking, the all or nothing thinking, and the taking it overboard. The making a little thing a bigger thing. Okay, I think we've had some time, maybe another minute. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and share the poll results. So most of you guys have found yourself using these unhelpful patterns of thinking. Some of you guys haven't, that's great if you haven't. And then you're not sure, um, that's also okay too, but that's just a poll result that we just did. So we'll go ahead and close. Go ahead and close the box when you guys are done. Um, individually, you guys can click the little blue close. And let me keep going. Okay, so we are going to start stop, thought stopping. So when we have a negative thought, which is there's no point in trying, we're going to instantly stop. And then we're going to go into a positive statement to replace that. So instead of saying there's no point of trying, we're going to say this situation could be easier if, and then we're going to fill in the blank. So we're going to try to do a lot of thought stopping when we find ourselves 
putting ourselves into negative thoughts. We want to address that we're thinking negatively and we want to try to switch and stop right then and switch it to a positive thought. So we're going to do a stop and go technique. So we're going to stop negative thoughts and go try to switch to a positive thought. And by doing that, we would have to think of what could make whatever the situation help at any point. There should be something to even talk about, anything we could try to do to make whatever negative thing turn to a positive. So by doing that, we're going to focus on what is in your control. So examples of area in your control would be your reactions to events and people and your thoughts. So that is something that you do have control over. And we're going to put aside what is out of your control. So what is out of your control, some examples would be how people respond to you, other people's feelings, and substance use of others. Some strategies to reduce stress would be, like I said, addressing your stress. So we would notice your thoughts and feelings. And then we're going to avoid judging your thoughts and feelings because you're entitled to have feelings and thoughts. It's just what are we going to do to correct and to change them into more positive thinking. So some everyday strategies to reduce stress would be eating well, drinking plenty of water, sleeping well, exercise, creating time each day to relax, and also playing with your children. Some relaxation techniques, controlled or deep breathing, and that would be focusing on your breath, inhaling, taking long, deep breaths, controlling your breathings in stressful situations definitely helps. You could also imagine yourself and your thoughts just floating away in a cloud or a balloon. You can imagine yourself at the beach. You can imagine yourself anywhere in the world mentally and just imagine any of your negative thoughts just floating away during that time. Also some relaxation techniques would be progressive muscle relaxation, relaxation, and that is tensing a group of muscles and holding in a state of extreme tension for a few, section, few seconds and then relaxing the muscles. So you could do that easily by even just having your hands and just squeezing your hands for a little bit. And that just is another way of relaxation, pressure, um, just squeezing your hands together relieves a lot of tension. And if when you are tense and then giving yourself a way to release the tension, whether it be your hands or you could also do it with your arms just to hold for a little bit, for a few seconds, and then relax. That is also a way to help relax your muscles and relax your body down by just tensing and being able to squeeze some of the stress out. Also, positive self statements also help. Acknowledging the best qualities of you. I work hard, I am smart, I try my best, I am a good parent. Those are also things that will help you reduce your stress. And overall, reducing your stress will help you enjoy your children and will help your children learn positive ways for handling stress. So if your child sees you taking deep breaths when they know that you're in a stressful situation, they'll start to model that you take deep breaths and they'll start to take deep breaths or any of your techniques that you guys use to reduce your stress, your, child, your children are watching and they will definitely take the examples that you lead for them. So I'm gonna throw it back on you guys. What are your tools that you use for reducing your stress? And you guys could go ahead and write that in the chat and we'll go ahead and share your comments. What are your tools of reducing stress that you guys use? For me, I use music. I like listening to music. That's my tool. When I get stressed out, I like putting in my headphones and listening to the songs that I like that put me in a good mood. I also like to do yoga sometimes if I have the time or watching Netflix. <laughs> Let me see what you guys put. <clears throat> Let's 
I'll read some of yours. Oops. I see go for a walk, running, meditation, hot bath, baking, listening to music, running, seeing my plants, exercise regular, music walk, the beach on the weekends, talking to friends, exercising, listening to music, spending some time in the backyard, sleep, music, watching TV, going outside, trying to keep a positive attitude, gardening, talking to my sisters, Zoom meeting with friends, taking deep breaths, hug hugging my kids, getting away from the laptop, hiking, of course. All of these are great, great stress reducers. Talking to family, eating healthy, all of these are great. Watching movies, eating healthy. I definitely would love to try to eat more healthy. A lot of these things I'm like, I need to do, add to my list as well. Okay, let's go ahead. I'm gonna go ahead and close the chat and move on. So, we're gonna take a poll. So you guys, um, I plan to use one or two of these strategies to reduce my own stress. So out of all the strategies that I put on, a lot of you guys have already been using those, but just go ahead and take time to answer the poll that's going to pop up that you plan on using one or two of these strategies to reduce your own stress. Many of you already have been doing that, these suggestions. Maybe trying a new suggestion that you might've learned today. But go ahead, I'll give you guys a minute or two to go ahead and answer the poll real quick, and then we'll share the results as well. Okay, about another minute, and then we'll close the poll and share the results. Okay, so we'll go ahead and close the poll right now and share the results. And most of you guys will plan on using one or two of these strategies. That's great. That's great. So go ahead and close the poll with the blue button. Okay. <clears throat> So we're going to just wrap it up with, we're going to remember that your thoughts impact your behavior and emotions. And that we want to try to break that thought cycle, that thought pattern cycle. And we're going to remember that you could talk back to your unhelpful, to your unhelpful thoughts. And that's by doing the stop and go technique. Once we find ourselves doing an, or having a negative thought, we're going to stop ourselves and we're going to talk back to ourselves and try to figure out how we can change our thought into being more positive or seeing the good out of any bad situation. Then we're going to also focus on what is in our control. S stuff that we could control would be our reaction to things and things that are not in our control. We're going to put that aside. 
And then also, last but not least, we're also going to try different activities to reduce stress. So I saw you guys had a lot of activities that you guys already do. So maybe now let's try to do some different activities to add on to. You can never have too many activities to reduce stress. And that is the end of the PowerPoint. So now I'm going to put this back to Ani. So I hope you guys enjoyed everything too. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much, Riley. We, uh, I mean, I really enjoyed the presentation. Thank you so much. Uh, so everyone, we're going to allow some time for uh, some time for your questions, comments, suggestions. So uh, if you guys unmute yourself, you can go ahead and ask your questions. Uh, we're here for you. Uh, we have time, so go ahead. You're welcome, Gladys, <laughs> in the chat. I'm just going to respond when I see the chat. The chat's open, Perfect. so I see. <laughs> I see you guys. <laughs> yeah. Let's see how far we get, because we could tomorrow. We're gonna have to do arrhythmia. All right. We can hear some background sounds. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Okay, uh, guys, I'm trying to help you guys here and unmute you for you so you don't have to look in your settings for the button. Uh, you guys can go ahead and ask your questions. We can hear your voices now. Hi, Riley. Okay. So, um, <laughs> I actually enjoyed the presentation. I did uh, participate in the presentation as uh, not as a staff, but for myself. And I felt that um, there was some great strategies provided by the other people in the training. So thank you everybody for all your good ideas. And I do see myself trying maybe some different stuff now. That's good. That's, that's good. I'm definitely gonna try to eat more healthy too. I see a lot of these eat healthy. So I'm... That would be a good one for me. I see. Um, how can I reduce my anxiety when going grocery shopping? Um, do you sometimes, well, what helps me is I write a list down, like hand write a list down and try to cross it off as I go. Do you write lists down? Sometimes that helps. Or putting in your headphones and tuning out all the stuff going that's going on around you when you go to grocery shopping. And usually when you have a list at the grocery store, you could just go straight to whatever you need instead of just kind of wandering around. Sometimes I don't bring a list and I find myself, my anxiety is at a peak because what did I come to the grocery store for? And I'm just looking for stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, Rocky, people, uh, like, I mean, some people are not in a great mood these days. Um, sometimes I see like people just, I don't know, just get back to me in the grocery store. They say something, oh, why are you walking here? Don't you see? Like the arrows are the other ones. I'm sorry, I didn't see it. You know, yeah. I'm not, people are not in a good mood these days, so it's a little stressful out there. Yeah, yeah it's, it's hard because you're supposed to be six feet away from people, but then even when you go in line at the grocery store, it's, they try to do the, 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 there's like tape sometimes I've seen to keep everybody away from each other, but I mean, you can only do so much. You could try as long as you do what you can once again, things that are in your control, if you can control that you have your protection, the, the gloves, the mask, um, whatever you feel that makes yourself safe, that's all that you can control. You can't control the other people with the attitudes or whatever they have when you guys go out in the world and deal with that's other people. Right. Other people are stressed too, so other people have bad days and they just don't want to even be out. That's right. You're right. So uh, we're hearing some background noises. Uh, oh, I think it's stopped. It is stopped. All right. Um, so we're here still for your questions, comments, suggestions. Um, if you guys have any questions, we're here for you. Go ahead and ask Riley. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. I can hear you. <laughs> oh, hi, I'm Maria Riley. Thank you so much for, I was just hesitating to talk because I'm like, can they hear me or they can't? But thank you so much uh, to both of you for that. Um, just my question is, 
I mean, before I had the stress, but somehow, you know, activities outdoor that I like to do, it helped me. But now that we, it's been you know, a long time that we're just home. I, last week I started to feel like this pressure on my chest that I never felt before. And I'm thinking, I know it's, it's, I, I'm a hundred percent sure that for the stress or mm -hmm worry you know not being able to do our normal life and just not knowing when is this gonna stop you know you hear so many things i'm definitely this um not watching news because it, it does affect me m more yeah and uh, just that feeling i i kind of i don't know if it's anxiety because i had friends that said oh you feel this if it and i'm like how do you you know how it's possible that you you know you cannot just take a deep breath and just let it go away but i did it and it wouldn't go away so i don't know so i think i i don't i'm not a doctor so and this is just i i sometimes get that and it's like it's um like your chest is tight it's like a yeah. tight chest yeah. um and when you do do the deep breaths it's like it's still tight like it's like whatever you do is still tight so what um i've learned is that um sometimes like just beating like beating your chest like not like um hard but it depends on the pressure but like for instance it's kind of a self-suiting like when you do for babies when you turn a baby around you're like kind of patting them on the back and yeah. um, it kind of it relieves whatever is tense in your chest it, if you pat it um you could try it when it happens again but it helped me like um patting my chest a little bit yeah. when i'm going through this it helps um like i don't know what it is but it loosens whatever the tightness is uh -huh. the tension i guess the tension and the tension in your in your chest but also that with the deep breathing but i know sometimes when it gets hard when your chest gets tight it is hard to deep breathe because it's like i am breathing but my chest is still tight yes thank i am definitely going to try that thank you so much it's yeah, just a, a feeling that i never had before and now that i am experienced experiencing it is like oh wow like it's yeah not, it's not pretty at all <laughs> yeah yeah and definitely at least and, and good thing that you're acknowledging it too so you know that your body is reacting to something differently as to how it usually is regularly so that's good that you're acknowledging that your body is changing when you are stressed so that's something that you could also see and maybe also try the um the pressure the um the deep pressure but i know sometimes with the with the tightness of the chest that the that um, pressure, the pressure on the chest would help. Yeah, thank you, Rayleigh. I'm, I'm welcome. Good. You're welcome. Oh, thank yeah. you, Maria. Just as a reminder, if you guys are having problems with your microphone, you can always uh, type in your question in the chat. I can read your question for Riley uh, so she can answer. Um, other than that, if you guys uh, have any questions and you can use your microphone, please go ahead and unmute yourself and ask your question. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, and I have the chat open too as well. You feel, I actually I feel stressed too. You're not alone. I think everybody feels stressed right now. It's hard, um, especially in the situation, not knowing, just everybody not knowing what's going on. I don't think anybody knows really what's going on. I think we're all in a state of just not knowing and I know it's people um, that have anxiety or depression already. It's a lot, it's a common um, thing to have, I guess, right now, but it's very hard for people that also have that right now because of the fact that the whole world is stressed. It doesn't help people that already have anxiety and depression to feel all the pressure of the world not knowing either. It's already kind of bad enough when we don't know personally, but then when everybody doesn't know, it is stressful. So something that would help when you do feel stress is talking. So even though it sounds simple, but just talking, 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 and making sure you don't have it bottled up and at least you having an outlet to talk to somebody to, whether it be a friend, your, the journal, just writing in your journal or something, just getting your emotions or whatever you're feeling out. Like I'm stressed because I feel like anything that you feel, it's easy to write it down or talk instead of just kind of feeling it, just keeping it in. And then, um, yeah, um, reading, talking with friends, cousins, telling me to understand what's going on, same going on with others. Yep, we're all in the same boat. And yeah, I think just having these group discussions or just having open discussions help with stress as well. And then um, said, I love going on walks, but you can't go out. 
and have a baby, she wants to throw me. I think you could still go out on walks. You just have to have your mask and things on and just not go on a walk where everybody. Oh, sorry. I didn't know that you guys can't see this chat. So is it okay if I say? So Okay. So Riley, uh, I don't think attendees can see each other's chat. So okay. it would be helpful if you just uh, call, for example, Melissa oh. asks this question. and Okay. Is, yeah. Okay. Oh, so the, your your baby won't wear the the mask, so it's hard for which I could see that being um, an issue, a little paranoia when walking outside. Um, so Melissa, okay, these two. Do you have the little child, the little child, the children mask? I know it's it's hard, it's difficult. My son's a little bit older, so it's a little easier for him because I said he was. Um, a doctor or something, I made something up for him to wear. But maybe if he tried to say like, oh, you know, it's a doctor, we're going to be doctors for today, you can put the doctor mask on, or oh, you could be some superhero or something um, to try to make it fun. But yes, unfortunately with kids, they do rip it off as soon as you put it on. And my problem that I was having was the, even when you do take your kids out, they want to touch everything. And it's like, a that's even more of a stress because you can't control what they're touch it and then you got to wash your hands every five seconds and as soon as you wash your hands they go touch something else so yeah young toddlers it is hard to take them out and i do find myself not trying to take my son out as much because you are being a parent trying to protect your child and being so young you can't be really right on him every single second of the day and it's, it is very hard um for two, though, um, maybe I would suggest what I was going to try to do for my son this weekend was trying to take him to an open, like an open field, like an open grass area. That's not the park, but just something where it's open so that at least they can run around and not be around people, but still have the experience of being outside. So you don't have to really kind of panic on, oh, are they going to be a close in contact with anybody? Because hopefully there's somewhere there's just grass that your child could kind of just run around, even though it's probably going to be hard to find it. But I'm sure somewhere there's a patch of grass that you can kind of just take your two-year-old out to run and not feel that you have to go and get her or go and get him or her to get the mask to be around anybody. So, yeah, the running around part. So, you know, it, maybe, I don't know where you live, but there might, if you could try to find a little place that's a little secluded that you could try to take her to run around that would help because walking outside with the other people it is it is hard and it is stressful because you're now you're trying to make sure nobody's coughing nobody's doing anything i live in an apartment too so you, yeah it, it's it's hard because if you might have to walk down the street and then that walking part to get to where you need to go is hard so um i mean and then that's another thing you could you could only do the best you can like the mask everything it's the best you can honestly we just have to keep in good spirits about it and just um if you pray just make sure you just um, whatever you do as far as the self um taking care of yourself just putting it into putting it into the fact that we can't control everything we can't control the world we can't control what's going on we can't the things that are out of our control we can't even try to control them so, and I do, I do agree being a single mom, I'm a single mom too. It is definitely a hard burden because you have to, you have to, you have the responsibility of your child. You're the person that is taking care of your child 24 seven. So that alone is already stressful. Being a single mom, trust me, I know it's already stressful. So now that we have a pandemic crisis outside in the world, you know, where's the help? But then that's where we have these discussions and we have these forums, we have these webinars, we have YouTubes and things that we could just feel a little bit more supported, a little bit more secure, just knowing that you're not the only one going through this alone. And that we have people that have little infant bait. Like there's a lot of people that have a lot of different situations going on right now, a lot of loss of jobs, loss of places, people that don't have transportation, and still can't go out there's just so many things that people have to go through unfortunately right now so what we're going to do out of that bad situation so for instance with your daughter trying to go walk outside we just have to try to see what the good is about or try to find a good in that so what can we do if we can't have her keep the mask on then what can we do maybe we could say you can go out for a little bit with the mask on and then put the mask on maybe just having the mask on for a little bit and just increasing the time of having the mask on like oh you had it on for a little bit let's 
um, kind of do like a reward kind of system to kind of get her used to wearing the mask and making it fun. Um, maybe finding a YouTube with um, little toddlers having the mask on um, that she could see. Hope that kind of helps. Let me go up to um, Maria. Said, does anyone experience a little paranoia when walking outside? Oh yeah. Because the stress of bringing the virus back home. I definitely agree with that as well because it's just, it's, it's a lot. Because I found myself, I got the gloves and then I touched things with the gloves and it's like, okay, take the gloves off. But then I might have touched the car door and then, oh, maybe I might have touched the car door when I didn't have the gloves on. Then I'm over here thinking, oh my God, then what did I touch? Blah, blah, blah. And then I could have stepped on something with my shoes. And then I brought it in on the carpet. My son's on the carpet rolling around. It literally, this could drive anybody crazy. And you just really have to just take it one day at a time and just make sure you are in control of your mind of what is in control. It gets too crazy. And it doesn't help when you watch the news and they're telling you, Go to the door, take off all your clothes, put it in a bag, bleach it, put it in the, it's a lot. So I think, honestly, just do the best you can. Um, it's because I feel like going crazy, trying to nitpick at trying to be perfect is going to, it's not going to, it's, it's just going to drive yourself just as crazy as trying to prevent everything. It's, it's a, it's a, a balance that you have to, don't make yourself crazy trying to avoid everything too. No, it's hard. But the the news is definitely something that you need to watch in moderation. Maybe try then I would suggest don't wake up to the news or go to sleep watching the news. Maybe in the oh middle God, of the day. Riley, that's exactly what I do. <laughs> <laughs> that's like, so bad. <laughs> Maybe try to um, wake up. Do not even look at the news. Wake up. You know, no. get your kids if you have kids. Your whoever. Do something that has nothing to do with the screen. Put the phone away. Write in your journal. Go try to maybe do a workout. Go eat. Do something outside of the phone. Wait a couple hours. Then when you're ready to see what's going on in the world, then open up your phone and say, "Hey, okay, this is what's going on." But waking up as soon as you get up and looking at this chaos every day, it's draining. It's draining. Going to sleep, reading it, draining. Um, updating yourself throughout the whole day with it, even more draining. Because this has been going on for weeks. And imagine every day throughout the day you're reading these updates on the virus. That's all your mind is going on. Virus, virus, virus. We got to think about, sometimes you got to set aside, maybe watch a Netflix series, watch a movie, listen to a music, dance. Do something outside of it for a little bit. And I see my head hurts. Yeah. My head hurts too, just to think talking about it. <laughs> and it's hard. It's I'm hoping this passes soon, but we do have to prepare for if it doesn't pass soon, then we have to try to figure out how you as an individual cope with stressful situations or just what is best for you. I know a lot of you guys have um, told me what you guys are doing um, to relieve the stress. So trying new things as well. And um, we're at home now. So there's a lot of things that we could start hobby wise taking up that we probably haven't did before that could kind of get our mind off of it. If you have kids um, doing maybe board games, bringing the board games back, tic-tac-toe, just doing a lot of try to family engagement type of things at home. Um, I think the problem is, is the outside. Cause I do find myself, you're at, in home so much. Uh, you could do a lot of things in home is at home. It's just the whole getting outside. Um, Cause you could be inside, inside, inside and be okay, but you still need that outside time. So um, I'm even going to try to do a walk. Um, maybe try to tell yourself, I'm going to go try to do a walk once a week. Just or maybe even around the, maybe not even around the street, just to the parking lot and around, make take laps around the parking lot, or just having outside air. No, not you. No, no, no. <laughs> oh, you haven't been outside since this. Oh, Melissa says she hasn't been outside since this. Uh, do you have a mask, Melissa? If you have a mask, you could go outside and try to breathe some fresh air. It's definitely good to have some outside air, because being cooped in the house it could drive you crazy just being in the house and just even just taking your shoes off and just putting your feet in the grass and just being mm -hmm. in the nature, just being there. 
some help getting back grounded. Um, we're, a lot of us are ungrounded right now because we just were we're stressed, our anxieties <laughs> up, our depressions up. We're not grounded. We're unstable. We're cloudy minded. Sometimes we just need to go lay down like a little kid in the grass and just lay there, or maybe sometimes just laying out on the floor. Just sometimes you just need to just relax and just like almost on a meditative type of um, way just to get away from all of this. It, we are definitely wrapped up in it all the time. But, uh, we so no have to, a little more time, so you guys can still ask us any questions, or if you guys have any comments, you can go ahead. We still have time. And I'm definitely here um, as well. I, you guys can definitely call me, um, email, text. I'm here just to talk to. If you guys just want to talk, talking, like I said, it always helps. Um, I do see a lot of um, going outside. And I think that the going outside is scary, but we don't want to make it scary. Like going outside shouldn't be scary. It should be outside. Like we don't want to be scared of going outside, but I know around people, we don't want to be around people, which makes sense. But going outside, we should still be able to not have the fear of going outside. So we want to try to at least get away from people, but still be able to go outside. Um, are there any online socializations with the kids plant that's a good idea I'd like to have a zoom kind of thing with kids right uh that's a great suggestion that's a we good don't idea planned yet but uh that's a good suggestion we, yeah. we're definitely going to take this to uh, our supervisor nina and uh address this so thank you so much yeah that's a yeah um I think that's great because I think when kids see other kids on here, they feel a little more um, comfortable that they have other kids in their own, that they're, they see other kids at home too. And I was even thinking maybe having kids doing a little like group, little kid workout thing, like all the kids doing jumping jacks or whatever to kind of keep their um, energy regulate it because I know they have a lot of built up energy that they can't really express in the house. So I know working out helps and just doing a few jumping jacks or whatever all together. I definitely want to move forward with having some socialization with the kids online. So thank you, Nakisha. Nakisha? I don't know. I'm sorry. Nakisha. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Nakisha. Thank definitely you. want to move forward with that. Is that something that you um, meant as far as like the kids just talking to each other? Yes. Um, well, just even just seeing each other. I, my daughter is an only child, so she's not around any other kids. And I feel like, she, you know, usually we would, before we would like just go to the park so she could like play yeah. with other kids. Um, but now she doesn't have that outlet, you know? So it's just yeah. me and her. And I would love to, you know, sometimes we call like our cousins on like um, FaceTime and stuff. And she loves it. She loves seeing them. So I was yeah. thinking maybe if we do like a little activity or something like that with the kids, sing songs and stuff, she would really like it. Yeah, um, you could take my information down after this because I do have a son as well. He's the only child too, so I definitely understand. He is, I try to um, entertain him as much as possible, but he does get sick of mom in his face. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, definitely um, having the kids be able to have um, an option for the kids to talk to would be great. Okay. It is hard for a child. I am actually an only child, too. Um, me, too. I hate it. <laughs> yeah, me, too. <laughs> I if, hate if it. I was a child, now, these days, I would be so upset if my mom didn't yeah. let me go out and play with my friends. It would be really bad. Yeah. But the only thing about kids now, they have so much now to do. We didn't have nothing being only child back then. It was just... Oh, my God. Now there's there. video games. There's tablets. Yeah. I don't know. Different Not everything. Consoles. They got the smart watches and stuff. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. I wish I had this time growing up being an only child. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um um at least they do get the attention. I do realize that they don't have to fight over the toys, you know. I think it's a give and take cuz I know kid that people that have multiple kids too, it's also chaos with multiple kid families because then it's the sharing, the arguing, the fighting, the now it's the you know, it's it's it's, it's pros and cons. For both. 
I'm not too sure how long this goes, Ani. I don't know how much time we have, but I don't want to keep talking and I don't know how much time I have. So, sorry, I was on mute. I didn't realize. We're not going to get kicked out when we no. reach 2 p.m. Um, okay. So, if you guys have any questions, we can still uh, answer your questions. Uh, and if you're if if you're good, there are no questions, suggestions, comments. You are uh, you can leave the webinar. That's a red button that says end meeting um, or leave meeting at the bottom right corner of your screen. Uh, but if you do have questions, comments, or we're here, we can answer you. And.